Hello, Emmanuel here. Welcome to a new video of Know Your Notes. Today, I'm going to talk about the shapes flatter that extract. This one is an extremely powerful note since it gives you a lot of control over your shapes. For example, in my piñata material, I use it to add details, noises, and colors at shape level, which will be impossible to do with a tile generator or a sampler setup. The note has no parameters but a lot of outputs, and to use it, you need to connect both inputs into a shape splatter node, which in short is like an advanced tile generator or sampler. So let's check them out. The first one is the position, that will color each shape with a mix of its X value from left to right in the red channel and the Y value from top to bottom in the green channel. We can see it better if we connect an RGBA split node, as you can see the position on X is in the red channel and the position on Y is in the green one. We can now connect our levels to the red or green channel and filter the shapes based on its position, which is extremely powerful because now we can create masks that will affect only the shapes in the region of the map. Then we have the UVs in shape space. With this, literally, we can add a texture, a noise, etc. at shape level, as you can see here. I'm connecting the base color of a material as the texture input of my UV mapper node, and the UV map info as the UV map input. And now all the shapes have the texture in their own UV space. This is how I did this glued paper material for my piñata. By the way, I'll share my mapper node for free on Google. The link is in the description. It's a quite straightforward node, all it does is to project an image to UV coordinates. The next one is the UVs in texture space, which is basically the same, but the rotation of the shapes won't affect the texture, as you can see here. Then we have the bounding box output, which has the size of the shape in the red and green channel, red being the X size of the shape, and green being the Y size. This can help us filter the shapes based on their size in a similar way to position. So we connect an RGBA split, and then a levels to the red channel if we want to filter the size on X, and the green if we want to filter the size on Y. Remember that we can always mix them afterwards with a blend node to create a more complex filter. Then we have shape index that will give us the shapes in grayscale values based on the row and column. We might need to add some auto levels in order to see the values. The columns are in the red channel and the rows in the green one. With this information, we can literally select each shape based on its index, or maybe select all the shapes in one row or all the shapes in one column. An easy way to get a unique grayscale value per index will be to use an RGBA split, then connect two levels, one for the red channel and one for the green one. In each levels node, change the output to avoid using zero or one values, and multiply them with a blend node. Then you can add another levels, and you'll see a different grayscale value depending on the shape index. The next output is pattern ID. For this one, we also might need another levels. It allows us to filter the shapes based on the pattern inputs that we're used to draw them. For example, here I'm mixing the UV output with the pattern output, and I'm adding a different texture depending on the pattern ID that was used. Square receives one texture and hexagons another one. And the last one is the shape angle, which gives us a different grayscale value depending on the rotation angle of each shape. For example, if we remove the random angle of the shape splatter, all the shapes have zero degrees, and the map becomes full black since there is no variation. If we add it again, the different grayscale values appear again. As you can see, this node gives us a lot of control over the shape splatter up, and its true power comes when you start mixing the different data outputs of this node in order to create complex filters and variations. Anyway, that's all for now. If you think of an interesting way to use this node, please let me know. I would love to see some amazing results. Thanks, and see you in the next Know Your Nodes video.